Hey folks, what was this show? What was this goddamn show? Let, let's go over it. Su SummerSlam was so mad it should be a crime. Now you think the second biggest show of the year should have more important stakes in the matter. Of to ha be so irrelevant that they're literally having another pay-per-view scheduled the next week. We have a DQ, we had no DQ match. We had the Fiend versus Braun that was built up for months now. Orton against McIntyre, that was literally the best match in the show, next to Asuka and Sasha Banks that had all right selling. And it came to a predictable me measure of Asuka winning because she's a raw a superstar. Over to the semblance of Sasha being so irrelevant. That most of her five title reigns can barely sum up to half the year. That she won her fifth Raw Women's title from a deep from a count out finish. We had Dominic so freaking stirred up over the raw emotion of disrespecting the Mysterio name, disrespecting his family. Dominic persuading his father not to intrude in the match and being and not being his corner. Obviously, he came out to help out with Buddy Murphy. But besides the point, it ended up with Dominic losing. We also had Bailey against Sasha, and like the two women's matches were the weakest. Like the and and the saddest thing too, because so, uh, over most of what happened in the card, the. Uh, the Mandy Rose and Celine Deville match was the most story driven. It was supposed to be a hair versus hair match, but because of personal reasons, they made it a loser leave uh, WWE match. Because, of course, Sonya needs to take time off because she deadass nearly got kidnapped uh, like under a week ago. Came also with fucking Otis, sorry. Otis coming around. Looking fat still, with no other character dri driving this other than she's in the. And he's in a kayfabe relationship with Mandy. Coming around supporting her beach. Coming around not even cashing in. At a pin down Bray, uh, Bray Wyatt. Who just took a spear. By Roman Reigns off a surprise return. Shockingly that was a surprise return. And over Retribution's time. Trying to take over WWE. Ruin most of its uh, shows. T take out most of its production. The only thing that was taken down was pretty much the camera work done from Kevin Dunn, because somehow over the tag team match there was so much camera, so much camera cuts going from ringside, outside. Can't even do wide angle shots. It felt so amateuristic, like you're going all over the place, even though there's like four people you're concentrating in the ring, and only Zelina Vega that usually only cut by like a limited amount of time. This. And, and it feels so stressful, bro. I mean, the only thing I missed out was the kickoff match that was Apollo and MVP that I was not enticed to see. I'm not. I didn't watch it. I'm not wasting my time with the kickoff. Don't ask. It's a waste of time. We had, of course, what they supposedly call a low point in the match in involving involving uh, the street prop, street profits against Andrade versus Garza, uh, Garza, uh, Garza and Andrade against the street profits. It it was a weak standpoint match because of the camera work. The selling was just a bit off. No, none of like the poisonings and stuff was even filtered into the match. There were suplexes, drop kicks, their their gear looked terrible, especially for Summer Slam reasons. Hurricane Aranas. It came with a drop kick that it looked like Garza suddenly missed on, but they sold it off as a leg drop. Angelo Dawkins with an average hot tag. And as soon as there was a bump, even though for majority of what's been happening with the relationship of Garza, Andrade, and his leader Vega, they know they're not in any source of closer relationship other than her trying to make these men successful. So the source of an accidental bump causing Zelina Vega to go down for Andrade to put its complete attention to her made the match completely dumb off the off that overly high uh, frog splash 
I hate the Street Profits. I've over, I overly ranted over the Montez Ford. They pretending to think they have a personality. The over reluctance on screen time annoys me. They have no charisma. They're forceful. We want the smoke crap. I gotta stop. They they show no semblance of entertainment. Other than when Bianca Belair is in the screen. I feel like they're really talented and athletic young individuals. But other than that, that doesn't sum up that they su they suck. And like, what's the standpoint? What's the tag division looking on Raw and SmackDown? We have either Murphy and Rollins. We don't have the authors of Pain. Rude is supposedly supposed to be tagging with Ziggler, but he's not there any. But Rude isn't there for a while. Like, the only thing I see them feuding with is either the Viking Raiders or... Viking Raiders still, because uh, they're they're buddies now. They're the Viking Prophets. And, of course, the Hurt Business probably taking the belts away. That I advise, because the Hurt Business just been pseudo amount of jobbers full of black people. Next up, we had uh, Sonya Deville. I'm just going over the weaker matches first. Sonya Deville against... Mandy in an ODQ loser leaves WWE match. And I'm trying to understand, like, how could you not make this a good match? I want to understand, man. I'm trying to. How could you not make this a good match? You had just lackluster selling over the standpoint of Flying clothesline that barely looked like she was just pulling her down using her freaking wrist. A table that wasn't even that utilized into the match. Poor selling off Mandy Rose's case. Just abundance of bicycle knees that were going nowhere. And it felt like there was no compassion. No selling for especially a few that's been built up over personal strife and jealousy for the past several years. When you do shit like this, this gets people angry. Not your flippy dippy bullshit. No selling... BS what anybody trying to get pissed off on Roman Reigns for at least Roman Reigns match actually has hype and excitement No one when you're doing stuff that's supposed to show emotional investment It's supposed to pay off especially in the bigger pay-per-view of the year And you just announced that being bigger because you're doing another goddamn pay-per-view the next Sunday Like that that's already dumb enough in itself like what are we gonna build up in, in under seven days? WWE should really die in this in this amount of stupidity. The only thing I'm excusing for most of this is congrats to Karrion Cross being NXT champion. I saw the match. It was a cool match that he had with Keith Lee. And uh, thank God uh, Velveteen Dream did not win the North American title. And I think it went to Damien Priest. Sadly, Pat McAfee lost to Adam Cole, I think, on TakeOver. I did not watch the entire show. Next up, we had Dominic against Seth Rollins. Kendo sticks galore. This was just brutality in its most, not the finest, but it was well-deserved ass-kicking. I think it was better off that they gave Rollins a win, how shocking it was in the first point. But the match itself was fine. In, in the semblance of, you know, this is the first ever professional wrestling match that Dominic's going to have against a high uh, seasoned veteran like Seth, and I think he did an average job, very little blotching. Hurricane Arana is really tall, so the guy's taller than his father, so it's crazy that he's doing 619s, crazy suplexes, flopping, tossing around Murphy like he's just a rag doll. Uh, crazy enough until the handcuffs came into play and Mysterio's emotions came for the better of him. Uh, Mysterio's, uh, uh, Dominic's mother started getting involved and it ended up with uh, distractions. A curb stomp after Dominic was going to equal the numbers. So it was crazy. We had an emotional post-match hug for Mysterio and Dominic. And I'm, I'm proud of the kid because there wasn't no botching. Of course, the kid was involved in a, another interesting match involving Ray. That was uh, SummerSlam 2005 with Eddie Guerrero. He also did the Frog Splash, bro. That, that was crazy for me. Uh, interesting tights for Seth Rollins. Really based on uh, his match he had with Eddie. So this was super emotional. And I'll give him that. Even though I'm not that enticed. <clears throat> to watch. We also have of course. 
Sasha Banks versus Asuka. This was a really good match. I think the best was a sunset flip to powerbomb outside the apron. And a lot of selling off the knee. And some cool transitions that it came into a pop, to a slam, into an arm bar, to a knee bar, into some good ankle locks. It took uh, Bailey nearly getting out the ring into what could have been the bank statement into a sleep uh, Oscar lock for the win. Average match. Sasha looked fine, other than she's still going to be treated as a legitimate cowardly joke that legitimately needs to do something. Like, I want these women to succeed. I want them, if they want to be like a cornerstone part of the show, they need to be treated more legitimately other than this PG schlop. It's not working out. It's BS. I'm the only person that's treated more legitimately is Ronda Rousey, and she's not even in the roster anymore. Uh, Shayna Baszler. Sometimes Asuka. Just her promos are just our minute laugh laughable, even though she's the most entertaining part of Raw. Uh, Liv Morgan, even though she should be given more screen time. Like, Sasha needs her own damn faction. She and Most of her feud just cater around... Whatever happens against the lower tier talents on the women's division, or just revolving around the four horsewomen, it is not even a faction. It's just a few fr shoot friends that were part of NXT, and that doesn't work anymore. Even though you you now have half a decade in the main roster, that means something. And if you're not building a, any other legitimacy other than your lackluster Raw Women's title reigns, I think it's better off that you just unify the titles or something, because this isn't it. You already have. You can expand upon your women's your women's tag division. You can expand upon your women's singles division. So you have some women that need to get ready and be working together so they can pull off uh, their own development and women that are ready and they can just fight off of the women, women's title. It just doesn't work. And there isn't that many women to work with. Because there's women that should be in the tag division like Naomi, Dana, Brooke, Carmella. Lana, Natalia, and women that should be still fighting for the title, like uh, Lacey Evans, Mickey James, S uh, Sasha, Bailey, Charlotte, and Asuka. Like, it shouldn't be this hard. Oh, and Tamina and Nijak should be in the tech division. I, I just feel like there should be a lot. This should be, like, Sasha is enough. I don't give her a lot of credit. Because probably just her looks and her track record since being on the main roster. But I want her to do well. I really want to. I enjoy her matches. I don't think I've really had any matches that I ever spoke negatively about. So I really want her to do well. The, her ba the Bailey match with her with Asuka was weak. It was. Like, my new just... Doing the same thing Sasha does, and this was a match opener. <clears throat> Mediocre drop kicks. It ends off Sasha helping, but Bailey didn't help at all except giving some sort of moral support. So I guess this is coming up to a breakup, just building up and under a week. And nobody cares about this anyway, because this has already been dragging down ratings. But that's just my opinion. Next up, we had my favorite match of the night. Drew McIntyre against Randy Orton. Two good wrestlers, and Drew hasn't shown a bad match. And uh, I just feel like the match just had a lackluster finish, in my opinion. Uh, just off a quick roll-up, even though he has a finisher that can just finish him off in just a split second. And they would try to feed over, because of the effects of the RKO, taking another one, might do over McIntyre. And they've been selling over the point, McIntyre would be trying to evade any time that McIntyre would... Uh, Orton would think he would get his guard down. McIntyre just shoved him off. Decent separation. Alabama slam. A belly to be uh, belly to belly suplex from the top. A cool, a cool. What looks to be he was going for the the Claymore. He went for a snap power slam. A cool drop kick. Just awesome moves. Great selling from cool guys fighting for the world title. Uh, I thought it was a bit cheap, though. It ended up off of a quick roll-up finish. Just looked like he escaped Orton at this time, even though he can just clearly beat him. <laughs> I think Orton busted his nose in the match. 
I thought like there should there should have been a lot more bleeding, especially how much they were building and letting us up. As Matt as Orton being the biggest douchebag on Raw, him kicking his legend, father figure I mean not father figure exactly, but mentor out of Ric Flair. Punt kicking two legends, one also with a neck injury, just being mighty disrespectful and you know, it's not the first time they even did Orton Dirty since SummerSlam last year with Kofi Kingston. I think that ended off a DQ finish, but this one just ends off a roll-up. But it had a good match, but a lackluster finish. And I just hope they get a rematch come payback or something. They give Orton the title. Probably Orton gives it to Lashley or something, because I want Lashley back on the fray. So we can actually have guys that look like they're targeting the world title than just being there. Like Seriously. Like, if... Like, stop with Ziggler. Stop thinking Kevin Owens are going to be top guys. We got to be acting smart. We got to get, get people that are going, kids that want uh, people that are badasses, look like they can beat you up and look like they're going to be on TV. Not Kevin Owens. We already see how it was when he was Universal Champion for several months. For freaking Goldberg to take it out of it. For freaking Goldberg. And that's so disappointing. Kevin Owens is a skilled wrestler, but when it comes to actually building up to the main event frame, he can't do that. He has to go to freaking Ring of Honor and NXT to do that, because that's at least under ten, like fifteen thousand fans. <clears throat> so don't give me this BS that if you can do it on NXT, you can do it on Raw. No, you can't. Get over it. That's how life works. That's how the business works. But this was a good match. I'll. <clears throat> Please, if you're watching SummerSlam, do it. And next, we, of course, had, uh... The Fiend. Sorry, my throat is dry. Uh, the Fiend against Braun Strowman for the WWE Universal Championship. Now, spoiler alert, Roman Reigns came after the match. Otis did not cash in. He was just there to support his peach. That's about it. Looking like he has a mini bottom lip. Crop. His freaking crop top looking like a sports bra now. It, it just... This match was... I'm, I'm not saying two super heavyweights can't have a good match. It's like, it's possible. It just felt so bland. I mean, it was just power slam, power, power slam, no sell, no sell. Kicks outside. Like, Braun at least bled a tiny bit. There was a lot of bleeding in some of the matches this, uh, the, tonight, so... I'll advise that it was a good, these were good showings, but, uh, oh, God, it just felt like it, they were just doing it to do it. Uh, slams out the table, the apron, somehow out of most wrestlers just finding the outer part of the ring and just exposing the mat, showing the wooden part of the ring. Braun just thought it would be so edgy and thought it would be so cool using a box cutter to reveal the wood. Even though you could just power slam him on the outside, because it was technically false count anywhere. So why couldn't you just remove the padding that has legitimate concrete? That's a bit more devastating to look at than doing it on freaking wood. And they were taking pins on the outside, they were doing it near the entranceway, inside of the entranceway. Uh, tossing him along the entrance, and it just felt like such a boring schlop. Because even though Braun was supposed to have this cutting edge... They were showing Alexa Bliss. Like, this should have been, like, at least a spot-filled, story-driven, super-freaky match. Like, you can still keep the wrestling involved, but have Alexa Bliss show it, go in. I have Corbin, somebody to in invade in the match. Something for this to feel like this has a lot at stake. And it had... Then it just had The Fiend just doing his dumbass, uh, finger-mouth-raping... A manimal claw that that Braun just evaded quickly enough, and the power slam outside until he failed, and he got a sister Abigail twice on the wood that it looked like he hit the ring mat and uh, ring mat part instead of the wooden part, and it ended up with a three count. Bray wins deservingly because I hate Braun. I literally have a video on Braun being the blandest, big fat, big fat baby face piece of shit. Uh, Duck Dynasty rape victim part of the of the White family character I have seen, and I've seen a lot of bad characters. Uh, but Braun was supposed to be that that back to when wrestlers monster wrestlers look like monster wrestlers, 
Like we had that with Umaga. We had that with the Big Show sometimes. We almost had that with Mark Henry. We were supposed to have that with Big Daddy V until Big Daddy wanted to eat more. And, uh, just, it, it's tough, man. This match was so mediocre, it's tough to call. Like, Roman Reigns coming back to just spear the Fiend to at least have some source of excitement. I'd rather have that, because I know there's people that, of course, have backlash on Roman Reigns. And over the time, I, I did felt in that craze. Like, I hate Roman Reigns. He's so bland. They keep using promo time, even though he has no personality. I'd rather see Roman Reigns than just seeing the Braun just, Braun just look like he's trying to suck the phone part of the microphone in most of his promos. And the Fiend be overly cryptic. And I feel like he's doing a damn thing to change the impact of the show. And I already hear teasers that uh, Roman Reigns is leading Retribution. And I would feel like that would make no sense. Because Roman Reigns had benefited the most out of the WWE. What would he have to go in against the WWE? But that's my opinion. But that's the source of the storyline. So I don't know how they get from that. I, I don't care at this point. This show gets a 5 out of 10. Other than the Orton-Sasha Banks match... And Dominic match being a surprise, because I thought there'd be a few botches. I think there was a few mistakes, but other than that, Dominic did a hell of a job, especially his first time against a top guy. I feel like he should... Like, if they need him for another important storyline involving Rey Mysterio, call him up. He needs to be more uh, developed as a wrestler. You can bring him up on NXT, put it, bring him the Mysterio name up a lot of times and bring a chip on his shoulder. Right now, he looks like an 18-year-old Ethan Page. So, hopefully, they do a lot to build this kid up. I mean, he's older than me, but uh, hopefully they do a lot because I, I like Dominic. He needs to get better in his promos. His his ring his in ring needs uh, still some polish. And hopefully, he's just a diamond in the rough. Because WWE has an issue finding homegrown stars. And even if they find a homegrown star that gets over, they'll just cut him off. Right, right back. It's... It, th that was the show. I'm just entirely disappointed because of whatever plans they're doing below. And over all the popularity we have at CM Punk, it took now to endorse WWE Ice Cream. That's pandemonium for you. But thanks for wasting your time. I mean, enjoy, uh, taking your time out of your day watching my review of SummerSlam in the Thunderdome. Or some kind of random mode arena that they found that can give them events to let live crowds. Uh, the best match of the night was Pikachu. <laughs> I'll maybe put that in the thumbnail. Maybe. Maybe. But that was the show. Thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe so you can listen to more of my commentary. Of course, I do sports as well and professional wrestling. Hopefully, I get to do a lot more stuff, but it depends on what catches my interest the most. But that's it for me. Thank you.